Hey guys, it's Jamie from Futsal Miniatures here, and I would like to welcome you to episode 6 of Futsal Fridays, a series where we look at quick and easy ways to get your miniatures onto the gaming table. Today's video we'll be looking at varnishing our figures and how different varnishes can be used together to create more contrast and reinforce the work we have already done. Speaking of the work we have done previously, the beginning of this video will showcase the three miniatures we have painted individually, so you can see some examples of finishes that are easily achievable by following the techniques we have shown. If you are just joining the series now, please feel free to look back at our back catalogue of videos in order to see the rest of our content. And please also check out our Facebook page and newsletter, which I will link in the description below. There you can be the first to hear of what is going on at Futsal, as well as see live content from the States with Bill Thornhill, who sculpted these awesome figures. Now when filming this video, I wore a protective mask and was in a well ventilated room. Please ensure you do the same at home as varnish is not good for the chest. So to begin with, I thought I would give you an overview of my preferred varnishes. I really like using Liquitex varnishes via my airbrush and for hand painting. These artist grade varnishes are strong and tough wearing, and in my experience have the least effect on my paintwork compared to other acrylic varnishes. Be sure to purchase the red bottled variant if purchasing these, as the green bottles are too thick for miniature painting and require thinning. Red bottles are also pre-thinned enough to be shot out of my airbrush without the need for extra thinning. They therefore also clean extremely easily. Now for cans, in my opinion there is nothing as good as Tester's dull coat varnish. Now to begin with I always gloss metal miniatures. Many wargamers have mentioned metal models chipping on social media, especially if they are heavily gamed with. However, if you followed my preparation tutorial, Use a good primer and varnish. Following the steps in this video, I can guarantee this won't be an issue. Proper preparation and protection is the key for metal gaming pieces. I use Liquitex High Gloss via my airbrush. I hold the miniature around 30cm away from the airbrush and shoot at a PSI of around 25 I recommend using an airbrush with a larger needle size of at least 0.35mm, Spa Max Max 3, HPC Plus or a Badger Patriot would be my recommendations of choice. I leave this for a couple of hours to ensure it is fully dry. There is a misconception amongst some gamers that aerosol varnishes can frost and that there is nothing we can do to prevent this. If the can is properly agitated and also slightly warm, this will not happen. It is caused by humidity and unmixed varnish and aerosol in the can. Therefore I put the can into a sink of warm water and give it a good shake. Note I do not use hot water or put it near a heat source directly. Please make sure you do not do this or that the can get too hot as it is an aerosol. I then apply this varnish to the miniatures. The lacquer varnish requires a bit longer than the acrylic to be touch dry, and it will not look instantly matte, do not panic. Leave the figure to dry for several hours, and then the varnish will cure fully, and I believe you'll be happy with the finish. A single coat over the high gloss will not be dead flat, and if this is something you would like, apply a second coat once the first has fully dried. However, I do not like ultra matte figures, as this can kill contrast and wash out colours we have worked hard to apply. Now for the interesting section of this video. I think as a painter I have always used a single layer of varnish 
on a miniature and left the finish the same. Lately, after some feedback from other painters in the community, I have been experimenting with using varnishes to achieve different finishes and textures, reinforcing the contrast and effects we have already applied. I take Liquitex Satin Varnish and apply it to all areas of wood, metal and leather on the Irish heroes. On the priest, I do not apply it to the crucifix, as in the Middle East this would be very dry. When we look at leather and wooden poles in real life, they are often slightly satin, especially if they are well maintained. By painting these parts to be more satin than the figures themselves, they stand out more, creating more contrast. Different finishes on different aspects of a figure will draw the eye and help our paint jobs pop. I then take high gloss and use this on the edges of the axes and pick out several lengths of the chain coat. This ensures that there are differentiations within the metal coat as there would be in real life. I also gloss them out of the crucifix, it is now very shiny and will stand out next to the matte cross. Now using varnish in this way is very easy and is not particularly hard to wrap our heads around. I really hope you have enjoyed this video and we'll be back next week when we will take a look at simple effects we can add on top of the varnish, including mud, verdigris and blood. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. We appreciate any and all feedback and I'll see you next time. Hear ye, hear ye. Futsal Miniatures, 28mm historical miniatures. Futsal takes pride in the highest quality metal models, available in the UK, US and worldwide. Futsal believes in delivering high quality products. Find out more at futsalminiatures.co.uk.